Okay. There's a verse in the Quran that states, a soul isn't burdened beyond what it can bear. This verse helped me through one of the hardest moments in my life. It provided me comfort in knowing that I wasn't in control and that the one who is wouldn't give me more than I could handle. Grief is something that is rarely talked about in everyday life. People don't know what to say to someone who's grieving, and those who are grieving are afraid of being judged for talking about their grieving process. We've stigmatized grief so much to the point that we've placed arbitrary timelines on the grieving process. The other day I was at the grocery store and I heard a woman talking on the phone and she said, he's been dead for 10 years, stop talking about it, move on. So many thoughts were going through my head in this moment. But the one that stuck out the most was that what gives her or anyone else for that matter the right to dictate someone else's grieving process? This was a clear example to me of how folks are forced and pushed to grieve in secret. Oh, is my slide up? It's okay. Both forced to grieve in secret. There would be a picture of my parents up here and I would say, <laughs> these are my parents. <laughs> And they immigrated here from, the, from Somalia not too long before I was born. They, like most parents, did the best they could with what they had to provide my sisters and I with the best experience possible. They taught us about love, faith, respect, and through their actions we learned about work ethic, perseverance, and resiliency. They never shied away from our questions about death, the afterlife, or grief. And at a very young age, we knew that death is something that comes to all of us, and that every soul was going to taste death at one point in their life, right? And in that moment, they gave us the strength to know that grief is a natural part of life. One of the stories that sticks out to me most growing up was the story of my grandfather's funeral. My grandfather passed away in Italy after receiving treatment for uh, pancreatic cancer, and my mother was with him throughout this process. And so he had to be flown back to Somalia for his funeral. And my mother would n never shied away or sugarcoated the pain that she felt that day when she noticed my grandfather's casket be loaded onto a plane the same way that luggage was loaded onto a plane. And every time I heard this story, I would think to myself, what would you do if you were to lose a parent? And any time that they would be sick or they didn't answer the phone, that's where my mind went. But of course, just as quickly as those thoughts came into my mind, they were gone once I heard from them and then knew that they were okay. But in November of 2015, that all changed. My mother was diagnosed with stage four cancer that had spread throughout her body. And now the thought of losing a parent, the thought of losing my mother was very real. The next year and a half was filled with countless doctor's appointments, rounds of chemo, and just medication, so much medication. And my mother, although her physical strength was weakening, her faith and her will to persevere through this only grew stronger. Earlier this year, the morning of Monday, April 17th, I got a call from my family to let me know that my mother was being rushed to the hospital. I dropped everything, I got on a flight, and I went home. That Friday, April 21st, around 8 a.m., I held my mother's hand as she took her last breath. In that moment, looking back, I was in a state of shock followed by an overwhelming numbness. I remember a tear rolling down my face as I remember my father closing my mother's eyes and giving her a kiss on the forehead. The next day, the female family members, including my sisters and I, prepared my mother's body for burial in accordance to our Islamic faith. And the days and weeks that followed, I was surrounded by family and loved ones, and there was always something to do and someone to talk to, but never a moment to fully process everything that was going on. Then the time came for me to come back to work. So I got on a flight, I found my seat, 
And when I, as soon as I sat down, tears uncontrollably started rolling down my face. I tried everything to make it stop, but nothing worked. And so I thought to myself, I'm just going to let this be. It'll be okay. Then I started thinking about the future, and these images started to come into my mind. And in that moment, I came to the realization that these images of weddings and celebrations and pregnancies and whatnot, that now I'd have to remove my mother from all of those images. Needless to say, that didn't help with my tears, and the woman sitting next to me on the plane was very, very concerned. <laughs> so I finally came back and was alone for the first time in a while, and all I can do was cry. I never wanted, didn't want to be around anyone. I just wanted to be left alone, and I just wanted to eventually stop crying. And now it's been months since my mother has passed, and it feels like yesterday and a decade ago all at the same time. I get moments where I'm driving to work or I'm in a meeting sending an email talking to a friend and tears just come to me and I don't know what to do and for a while I thought something was wrong with me. Until very recently I couldn't even watch Grey's Anatomy because, and I love that show, um, <laughs> because the sounds from the hospital machines would remind me so much and bring back the most vivid images of my mother's final days. And for a while, shortly after my mom's passing, I couldn't even talk to her sisters because their voices and their faces would remind me so much of my mom. So when we don't talk about grief, we make it harder to grieve. We make it so that people are forced to grieve in secret and are forced to be alone throughout this process. Grief isn't something that you just get over. It's something that lives with you and sticks with you forever, for the rest of your life. I'm grateful for people in my life, like a dear friend who shared her story of grief as she went through losing her mom as well. And I'm grateful for the people in my life who were there for me when I needed them most like my cousins who dropped literally everything within me calling them and were on a plane with me within hours of getting that call and were there by my side when all of this was happening. I'm grateful for my father and my sisters. Although we're grieving in such different ways, we continue to remind each other that we're not going through this alone and that we're there for each other. But above all of that, I'm grateful for my faith for keeping me grounded through one of the toughest storms that I've ever had to face in my life so far. So if someone shares with you their story of grief, pain, loss, I know it's going to be uncomfortable, and I know you're going to want to feel something, and you want to do something about it and make it better. Just bear witness to their grief and listen to them and let them know they're not alone. If you are someone who's grieving, and have gone through some pain and loss in your life, when you're ready and you're comfortable enough, share your story. There are many people who wish that they heard from others who are going through the same process. So I leave you with those two things. Listen to other people's grief, listen to their stories, and share your stories about pain, loss, and grief so that no one is ever forced to grieve in silence and no one is ever forced to do this alone, and that they have to do it in secret. And grief is a normal part of life, and so folks know that it's a normal way to go through it. Thank you.